Hello cells. They are the smallest, most basic forms of life that we describe. Some bacteria are unicellular, meaning they're one cell big. Others, like us, have millions. No, no, no. Let's see, 75 trillions of these critters. We are said to be multicellular. 75 what? Do you know what a trillion is? A trillion is if we take a stack of $100 bills and we pull them one after the other, all the way from New York to Chicago, we have a trillion dollars in our hand. It's just a very, very big number. 25 of those trillion cells, 75 trillion cells, are red blood cells, and 100 billions of them are in the nervous system. Thank God, that way we can think. Looking at their size, we describe them in microns. One micron is one thousandth of a millimeter. Ten of those makes a centimeter, and 2.5 centimeters roughly makes an inch. Their size range from four of those to about 135 of those. That's a 30 time increase that we can see. And by the way, both of those cells are in the brain. The one we can see with the naked eye is about 120 microns and greater, and that's a human ovum. That's an egg. A good size to know is the red blood cells at 5 to 8 microns. Cells come in many shapes. Human eggs are round, muscles are spindle-like, others are flat or cuboidal or columnar. The shape reflects a cell's functional properties. Keep that in mind. It's the same as I said in the beginning, structure will dictate function. As cells develop, they specialize to accommodate of what jobs they will have. We call that differentiation. Let's look at some basic cell structure. The cell's interior is mostly a watery liquid that is salty. Look at the term there, aqueous saline solution. That's what that means. Include proteins in that, and we call it the cytosol. The largest dark sphere on the inside is the nucleus, protecting the DNA. The cell membrane surrounds the whole thing. Then we have small internal bodies with specific functions. Some will make energy, others protein, etc., etc. They are called organelles. The cytoplasm is a cytosol plus organelles without the nucleus. A cytoskeleton creates a supportive structure to help maintain the cell's shape. It's kind of like our skeletal system for us. Then we have other cellular inclusions like lipid droplets or glycogen granules or other metabolic substances. The cell membrane surrounds all cells. It is also known as the plasma membrane, the plasma lemma, or the elementary membrane. Its main construction material are phospholipids, forming a bilayer with the nonpolar tails pointing towards one another. This creates an oil film surrounding the cells, which doesn't let water-loving or hydrophilic substances through. It's known to be semi-permeable. This cell membrane is infiltrated with proteins of multiple functions. Channel proteins can open or close and selectively let molecules such as glucose cross. Pores are channels for smaller molecules such as waters or salts or ions. And receptor proteins alter their shape when specific molecules attach to them and convey a message to the inside of the cell. A neurotransmitter, for example, can attach to a muscle cell receptor, making it contract. Cells communicate via cell membranes, and not the nucleus, which is often thought. This is where the omega-3, omega-6 story makes sense to me. Those fats are often formed and found in the cell membrane. Omega-3 oils make them flexible, the others more rigid. Communication is hindered if it is too rigid. Trans fats do that. 
That is why trans fats are found in blood are an indicator for depression. Chemical neurotransmitters can talk to rigid cell membranes. Omega-3s make them more flexible. If we eat more of those um, oils, the omega-3 oils, our cell membranes become more flexible and the neurotransmitters can communicate with them better. Then on top of the cell membrane is a glycocalyx. The glycocalyx is a thin film of sugary molecules waving like flags, identifying cells so others know that they belong to us and are not foreign. Non-self cells likely have to be destroyed by the immune system. Recognizing of self becomes very important in that process. Going inside brings me to the organelles, or little organs for cells. We discuss a few and describe their functions. It helps me think of a cell like it's a small, self-contained village. Independent and able to fulfill all tasks needed to stay alive. Many of the organelles are surrounded by a boundary-giving membrane, which is the same phospholipid bilayer surrounding the cells. The endoplasmic reticulum, or ER, is a tubular structure of elementary membrane. It functions in the synthesis of proteins and lipids, and in the intracellular transport of them. A rough ER has ribosomes on top of it, and that helps protein synthesis. And a smooth ER looks less rough, smoother, and does not have ribosomes, and therefore is more of a lipid production piece. Ribosomes are protein factories. Proteins for export out to the cell are on the ER, so that was the rough ER. And free ribosomes make proteins that we use inside of the cell or intracellularly. The Golgi apparatus are internal channel systems similar to ER. They ingest or excrete slash export substances in, substances in form of membrane-bound vesicles, which makes them kind of like the postal service. We talk about that process a little bit at the end of this chapter. Vesicles fusing with cell membrane renews the cell membrane. This is a great recycling system. It's wonderful to have a molecule like the phospholipid that is so universally useful. It simplifies things and we can reuse this process over and over in many different locations. Lysosomes are next. These are spherical vesicles containing digestive enzymes to degrade ingested foreign material. These vesicles can cause autolysis, which is self-destruction. Aha! Uh -huh. Cells sometimes have to self-destruct. Centrioles are hollow, open-ended cylinders of microtubules. They are important in cell division as they form the famous thread-like spindle structure separating DNA when we make two cells out of one. There are two of them creating cellular poles during mitosis, determining the direction of cell division. The mitochondria is the energy powerhouse providing fuel in form of ATP. They are surrounded by membrane and have a second inner one which folds on itself creating a large surface area which will help in the production of ATP. ATP can be made from all three micronutrients, the proteins, the fat, and of course, most preferably the carbs.